Hello, everybody. We're gonna get started now. So I just wanted to welcome everyone for coming to the Pre-Law Club's Black Lives Matter vigil. And before we get started, I wanna remind everyone to please keep their face mask on. And if you do not have one, we have a face mask available located on that table and the table over there. And so please remember to social distance. Please be aware that in the unlike unlikely event it starts to rain during the program today, we may need to take a brief pause in order to protect the audio-visual equipment we have set up. For those who don't know me, my name's Rabia, and I'm Pre-Law Club's president. We are so thankful to have everyone here with us, whether you are here in person or in our live stream. I want to thank everyone for setting time aside to come honor and bring awareness to something so important. As future lawyers, we must bring awareness and understand the different social issues occurring around us and find ways to help those in need. Our country has dealt with so much bloodshed from people who should still be here with us today. We are all here to honor the black lives that have been taken to us due to in injustice. They were all loved ones who were killed in the hands of people who were supposed to serve and protect. So we must say, our, say their names and educate ourselves about the racism that is everywhere. We must shine a light on these issues and talk about these things even, as in, even if it is uncomfortable. Even on a beautiful campus like Elmhurst, we've been face to face with racism when not even a year ago, our own campus was shut down due, for two days due to hateful and racist threats that were targeted against our black, Jewish, and LGBTQI plus community. And the people who have done that are still free to walk among us. So let's take this as an opportunity to self reflect and see how we can progress together as a community. Thank you so much for listening. And next, I will have Spiritual Life Council President Lorraine Schuler speak a few words. Hello, Elmhurst University students, professors, and staff. I am Lorraine Schuler, a junior psychology major, and I am also the president of Spiritual Life Council. SLC, as I will refer to it, is here on campus to promote growth, unity, and togetherness in a spiritual capacity. I would like you to know that I am honored to speak to you today, and no matter where you are spiritually, I want you to know that SLC and the Chaplain's Office support you and stand behind you. This past summer, we officially became a university. We are bigger than ever and need to ask the tough questions. We need to ask questions about those who are in a position of authority. Questions about roles that we as individuals but also as a society have and questions about our futures. Change is not something that will happen overnight but it is something that we need to do. We stand with you in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. We stand with you as we see cases of injustice, injustice towards black lives. We stand with you in support of you protesting for change. We stand with you to be united in your fight. We stand with you in your fight for justice for Brendan Taylor, George Floyd, Jacob Blake, and so many others. We stand with you as we mourn the losses that we as a community and nation are feeling. This is a time that we as a community need to stand together to make change for the better. Every one of us has an obligation to stand up for peace, equality, and justice. It is these core values that we as young adults need to stand up for. I want you to know that you have the full support for a spiritual life council and the chapl chaplain's office. It is time for change. You will be, it will be up to you that, to make a difference. And we stand with you as we support the Black Lives Matter movement. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Next, we're gonna have Black Student Union President R Raven Roan speak. Good morning, everyone. I'm here to talk about a problem, a true moral and incomprehensible problem, one that was founded since the beginning of this nation. While I was home in Texas during the stay home orders, I witnessed as a result of social media, the unprovoked and senseless murders of two unarmed and non-threatening black men, Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd, at the hands of individuals filled with bigotry and racism. Even more troubling is while these murders were recorded for everyone to see, 
justice still waits. Often too many times for blacks, it is either always lying in wait or it never happens. I'm gonna be real with you. This is not just a black and white problem. And I mean that both figuratively and physically. It is not just a police and government system against minorities problem. This is a humanity problem. One rooted in the complete misconception and disregard of basic human rights for all people. One rooted in the lack of compassion and understanding that basic human rights aren't just for a group of people. As a daughter of, pol of a police officer, I know that there are good and great officers out there. However, my father, as a black officer who has sought change, has experienced racism from individuals inside and outside law enforcement. He and the Lord above have taught me that each and every one of us has the responsibility to speak up against injustices done against individuals like George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, Sandra Bland, Tamir Rice, Jacob Blake, and Anthony Huber, a, a young white man struck down in Kenosha for fighting for black lives, and too many others that were killed and or assaulted in the name of racism, and to address the situations and laws that led to their deaths. Dr. Martin Luther King talked of two different Americas, one full of equity, prosperity, and opportunity. The other entrenched in humiliation, mercilessness, and hopelessness. To move forward in our campus community, we must address the root cause of these issues and work toward a more just future. There are those that want to say that all lives matter, but that's a distraction. All lives matter when black lives matter. Though this may be true for some, it is evident it is not true for all. Now, more than ever. I believe that we must focus on our education and economic stability as a people to move forward. Can we eliminate racism? Maybe, maybe not. But can we strive for equity and equality? Yes, yes we can. But it begins with us. As Gen Z and millennials, we need to make change in a planned and strategic way. And how do we do that? We set goals, we make a plan to achieve each and every goal. Our first goal is to achieve equity and diversity on Elmhurst campus. And I believe today that we have the support of the university. So let's make that the first step in changing the world. And in the words of Malcolm X, I'm for truth no matter who tells it. I'm for justice no matter who it is for or against. I'm a human being first and foremost, and as such, I am for whoever and whatever benefits humanity as a whole. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raven, for sharing your thoughts. Last, we will have Student Government Association President Michael Vaya come and share a few words. <clears throat> Hello, all. My name is Mike Vaya, and I'm the president of the Student Government Association. First, I want to thank you all for coming here today to pay your respects to those who have been killed at the hands of police officers nationwide. It would be an understatement to say that the social and political climate of our nation has rapidly approached the brink of upheaval, and rightfully so. The number of innocent, nonviolent black men, women, and children who have been murdered by the police with an utter disregard to their constitutional rights is absolutely unacceptable. A police officer does not have the right to act as judge, jury, and executioner. The police do not have the right to shoot first and ask questions later. The police do not have the right to intimidate and oppress the black community. We will not forget the names of those who we have lost to police violence and discrimination. We will not forget Trayvon Martin. We will not forget Breonna Taylor. And we will not forget Tamir Rice and many others. While the current times may seem dark and discouraging, we cannot give up on our black brothers and sisters nationwide. It's hard to remember during a time of prolonged tragedy that we as a committed and determined people have the power to make difference in our society. Each and every one of us are a light in the darkness of oppression. We stand together. When we stand together, they will never be able to extinguish our flames. Thank you for your time.
Thank you, Mike. Now we will honor and say the names and age of the black lives we have lost. I ask we remain silent until all the names are read and we will follow with a moment of silence. So please join us in honoring the black lives we will never forget, nor will we stop fighting for, because black lives matter today, tomorrow, and forever. Stephon, Stephon Clark. Ahmed Arbery, 25. Dresdon Reed, 21. Stefan Clark, 22. Botham Jean, 26. Michael, Michael Brown, 18. George Perry Floyd, 47. Dana Mitchell, 31. Terrence Crutcher, 40. Michael Brent Charles Ramos, 42. Priscilla Slater, 38. Oscar Grant, 22. Manuel Elijah Ellis, 34. Robert Forbes, 56. Betty Jones, 55. Charles Roundtree, 18. Avid McAtee, 53. Brianna Taylor, 26. Imante Bradford, 21. Earl McNeil, 40. Dominique White, 30. Antoine Rose, Jr. Thing. Elijah McLean, 23. Ara Rosser, 40. Saheed Vessel, 35. Dominique Clayton, 22. Damon Grimes, 15. Jordan Edwards, 15. Ryan William. James Lacey, 47. Aaron Bailey, 45. Tatiana Jefferson, 28. Charlena Lyles, 30. Chad Robertson, 25. Laquan McDonald, 17. Michelle Cousseau, 50. Alfred Alongo, 38. Jonathan Farrell, 24. Timothy Cogman, 66. Terrence Liddell Sterling, 31. Cameron, 14. Alteria Woods, 21. Derek Williams, 22. John Crawford the third, two. Deborah Danner, sixty six. Jamar O'Neill Clark, twenty four. Darius Simmons, in. 
Gabriella Verasquez, 22. Jeremy Bam Bam McDole, 28. Kenneth Chamberlain Sr., 66. Christian Taylor, 19. India Kager, 27. Ayana Stem, 7. Jamarian Robertson, 26. Taisha Shanae Miller, 19. James Cheney, 21. Donnell Thompson, 27. Brendan Glenn, 29. Jimmy Lee Jackson, 26. Joseph Mann, 51. Walter Lamar Scott, 50. Anthony Lee, 39. Philando Castile, 32. Megan Hockaday, 27. Amadou Diallo, 23. Alton Sterling, 37. Janisha Fonville, 21. Danroy Henry Jr., 20. Jay Anderson, 25. Jeremy Reed, 36. Willie Ray Banks, 52. Antroni Scott, 36. Dante Parker, 37. Trayvon Martin, 17. Quintonio Legreer, 19. Dontre Helmeton, 31. Jordan Davis, 17. Corey Jones, 31. Yvette Smith, 48. Isha McBride, 19. Samuel Dubose, 43. Barrington B.J. Williams, 25. Eric Garner, 43. Darius Stewart, 19. Larry Eugene Jackson, Jr., 33. Ezel Ford, 25. Sandra Bland, 28. Kimani Gray, 17. Tamir Rice, 12. Susie Jackson, 87. Jamal Moore, Sr. 23. Akai Gurley, 28. Daniel Simmons, 74. Damisha Diane Harris, 16. <clears throat> Tanisha Anderson, 37. Ethel Lance, 70. Melissa Williams, 30. Freddie Gray, 25. Marquise Jones, 23. Cherise Francis, 30. Thank you. Now, we will have a moment of silence for the black lives that have been taken from us while doing th things such as eating ice cream at home, 
sleeping, standing in his mother's gram uh, grandma's backyard, playing with neighborhood friends, walking home, having a mental disability, protesting for Black Lives Matter and for the civil rights movement and many more. And although we were only able to say about 100 names in the short time we have today, that does not mean we will forget about the hundreds of black lives that have been killed by racism and bigotry upheld in higher authority as well as among citizens and the United States. So please join me in our two minute moment of silence to pay respect and remember the countless lives that are no longer here. Thank you, guys. Before I hand the microphone over to Dr. L. Bernard Jakes, I want to point out that on the back of our program sheets, we have a QR code that will lead to different links about how you can help out and learn more regarding different organizations of people of color. I also want to take a moment to thank Black Student Union, Green Jays, Student Government Association, Phi Mu, Alpha Tai Omega, Muslim Student Association, Chaplain's Office, Elmhurst Minoritized and Allies, Office of Diversity and Inclusion, Athletes in Action, Spiritual Life Council, Crew, and Men of Distinction for co-sponsoring this event. We also have had tremendous support from cam campus administration when organizing this event from my advisor, Lisa Woods, Erica Ashour, Phil Royden, Cheryl Leone, Mark Molino, Desiree Chen, Chris Curtin, Marissa Isles, Jasmine Robinson, and many more. So thank you all for helping us plan this. Now, we will have Dr. Bernard Jakes. The Reverend Dr. L. Bernard Jakes serves as a senior pastor of the Faith Family of West Point Baptist Church in Chicago, Illinois. He's an alumni of the university and earned his doctoral degree from United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio. Dr. Jakes is highly involved with local, state, and federal policymaking, utilizing his voice as a local pastor, community activist, and human rights advocate to speak truth to the power as it relates to social justice, social action, and social accountability. His passion, commitment, and unwavering voice for the social justice have led to policymaking seeking his voice on statewide issues such as sensible gun laws, same gender marriage, increasing the minimum wage, education funding reform, etc., as well as federal mandates affecting the lives of unrepresented Americans. So without further ado, please help me in welcoming Dr. Jakes. Thank you so very much for the invitation, uh, Pre-Law Club. And before I uh, go further, I do want to acknowledge the presence of our university president, Dr. Troy Van Aken. We're happy that he's here. 
uh, as well as I see uh, Vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Phil Reardon, and our Director of Diversity and Inclusion, uh, Ms. Jasmine uh, Robinson. So we're happy. Yeah, yeah, give Jasmine a big hand. <laughs> so I wanted to acknowledge their presence today. Uh, I have been given the charge to offer closing remarks. Uh, before I begin with that, let me just clarify for some about Black Lives Matter as it relates to the police. Black Lives Matter is not anti-police. Do not believe the narrative. Black Lives Matter is about anti-police brutality and excessive force. But they're not against anti-police because I believe it was the president of BSU that said there are some officers out here that are doing the work and doing a great job. So I want to make that clear. The other thing that the, the president of BSU offered, for clarity's sake, is that the reason there's always a challenge when others say all lives matter in opposition to black lives matter is because when you say all, black should fall in the all. And if you're saying all lives matter in opposition to black lives matter, then that means that all lives matter with the exception of black people. That is why there's an opposition to all lives matter because no one at any point said that all lives didn't matter. All lives matter when all lives matter, but right now we're talking about black lives. And so as I move forward, let me just say that uh, racism is bad. You gotta call it what it is. Racism is bad, but the effects of racism is worse. Reinhold Niebuhr, uh, an alum of this university, was quoted as saying, change what cannot be accepted and accept what cannot be changed. Well, I, I challenge Niebuhr's construct because there's nothing that cannot be changed. In my faith as a Christian, only Christ is immutable. Therefore, everything is subject to change. And how does change occur in a society where a sect of people want things to remain the same while others are literally fighting for their lives and their livelihood. Change occurs when like-minded individuals like yourselves refuse to accept things as they are and they seek to find revolutionary ways to change the status quo. Change occurs when like-minded individuals connect seeing something with saying something and saying something with doing something about the injustices that have been levied upon the backs of any marginalized group in general and black people specifically. Change occurs when like-minded individuals like yourselves struggle and fight against a system that was created to oppress those who aren't within their caste system. I stand today encouraging you as well as challenging you to get involved with the struggle for fairness, equality, and equity for those who are on the receiving end of inequality. Listen, it's not enough to say Black Lives Matter on a t-shirt or say Black Lives Matter on a chant. If Black Lives really matter, it must be remembered in your meetings, it must be remembered in the classrooms, it must be remembered in the boardrooms. And as an institution of higher education that encourages students, administration, faculty, staff, and trustees to find their voice in the course of social justice, you are encouraged to do as the late John Lewis said, do not get lost in a sea of despair, be hopeful, be optimistic, our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month, or a year. It is the struggle of a lifetime. Never ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble. Can somebody shout good trouble? Good trouble. Get in good trouble, necessary trouble. So I leave you with the words of Frederick Douglass, where there is no struggle, there is no progress. If you don't like the world as it is, change it. You are the change agents. Now is your time. And so remember, you have a right. It is your right, it is your obligation to speak against all injustices. You have a right and it's your obligation to stand against all opposers of justice. And you have a right 
and you have an obligation to stand for justice because justice is God's idea. So I say in response to Niebuhr, change what cannot be accepted and keep fighting until something change. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jakes, for doing what you always do, and that is speaking power to the truth. Last, we are going to have our chaplain, Scott Matheny, come and do closing par prayers. I hope you all know that Dr. Jakes, who's an alum of this institution, is also a sitting trustee. And he took a lot of time to come out here to be with us and beyond prayers, we always start with prayers with the words of thanks. And I want you all to thank the Pre-Law Society and for the advisors for all that they have done to bring this together. Will you join me in starting with prayers of thankfulness for all that they have done to bring this together? Let us join, come on y'all, thank you. For the charge that comes with prayer, for the hope that we understand of this beautiful campus, and for why we are here, beloved, in all the ways that you understand yourself to be a child of the Most High. As Niebuhr says, children of light, children of hope, children who can change. Let us join our hearts together, beloved. Let us join together. O oh, gracious and eternal one, for this day that we have gathered for Black Lives Matter and to hold us accountable in all the ways that we understand the life of our hearts, our minds, our souls, our bodies. For bodies that are hurting or dead, for minds that can come alive in young people and all of us here at this great university, Elmhurst. Bless these who have rallied and organized. Bless them who have come out to listen. Bless all who begin to say, how am I going to be an agent of grace, love, change, hope, justice? Our values hold us. Social responsibility, social justice, restorative justice, to repair the brokenness and the breach of a society that is broken. We take that on. It is a long struggle. But we who believe in freedom, shall not rest. So grant strength to all of these, especially for our young ones, that they might begin to put their hearts and minds together, and that they might work together to change all of us. And that we who have the joy and gift of Elmhurst University, the blessedness of this great college that has stood for almost 150 years, now we are given this moment in the second week of term. Take us from this place charged, restless, anxious, frustrated, ready, but thankful. Thankful for the love that you give us, and the minds that can think, the hands and bodies that can organize, and our mouths, our mouths that can speak out. Take us now into the day and make sure that we know that our lives matter, that in Black Lives Matter, we know we are called to change, to vote, to work, and to never give up, never give up. All this we pray in your eternal name, gracious one. Amen. Beloved, go in peace to work, to be charged, to give thanks for all that this is. You, this great community, Elmhurst University, go in peace. Thank you, Chaplain Scott. Now, before I let you guys go, I just want to take a moment to thank you all for coming and showing your support and appreciation to a very important matter. I want us all to take a second to look around us and see the amount of students we have. And this is just in person. We also have a live stream going on. 
Don't forget you guys are loved, you guys are welcomed, and you guys are accepted. Black Lives Matter today, tomorrow, and forever. Thank you guys so much for coming.